Hello everyone, welcome to Green Aqua. I'm sorry to say, but Balaji is on vacation. So this week, I'm not sure if it, Guys, do I actually have to make a video instead of him or just tell them that he's not here? Make a video. Oh, okay. In that case, welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Uh, I have an empty 60p behind me. This was Yuri's old tank. So let's make a classic Iwagumi. So we have a full ADA set to work with today. This is an ADA 60p, so 60 by 30 by 36 centimeters. We're gonna make a classic Iwagumi. So actually my point with this video is that a lot of newcomers to the hobby always want to start out with the highest competition style and, and want to achieve that level, which is very difficult if you don't have any experience. Today I'm going to try to build something that even if this is, would be your first tank, you could build this at home. It's a very low maintenance Iwagumi style. Okay, so let's do it. I'm going to use ADA Power Sand Advance as a substrate. I'm covering the power sand with some ADA Amazonia. This is gonna be the actual soil we're gonna put the plants in. I always like to put in the smallest amount at first, and then obviously I'm gonna adjust the soil height later on around the rocks. If you don't actually know what this is, this is a brand new stone we received from our friend Adam from Poland. And this is called the Wild Rhino. This one has really nice lines. I really don't want to lose its height. I want it to almost touch the water level. Does it move? Yeah. yeah, it does. Oh, From the photo, now I've just realized that actually this time it's, it's the wrong way around. I've actually mixed up the whole front soil area, so I need to pick out some bits to make sure that they don't show in the front glass. This is a trick you can use when you have the same situation. Now I'm gonna have some Amazonia powder, which I'm gonna pour into a bucket and then try to pour it actually in front of the substrate and soil level you see now. Try to have an even level of soil in the front. It's just aesthetic purposes, nothing else. Okay, we're gonna pour some more regular soil in the back and we have a few rocks left to finish the hardscape. These are just a few details. I'm not gonna go crazy like we do with more complicated hardscapes. spray the soil as we always do very much recommended before planting okay Sebi uh, could you please bring me the plants yeah. we're gonna put the light back on so you can see it even better Gonna use the ADA pincets, the short ones. This is hairgrass, or actually, Eleocharis articularis mini for the geeks. 
Most of the tank is gonna be this plant. I'm not sure, I have an idea to actually have some Eleocharis vivipara behind the two big rocks and try to nurture them to grow in a, in a ring. It's important to take the plants into small pieces. Actually, some people go with the stems one by one. I think that's just crazy. But uh, the smaller pieces you take it apart to, the quicker it will grow. Also, another thing is that you should plant deep, deeper than what you would think is normal. If just the very top of the plant is out of the soil, it's gonna actually come out to the light by itself. But this way you can avoid the water itself pulling out the plant when you fill up. Probably if I would make this aquarium at home for myself, I wouldn't use this much plant. But of course it's up to taste. We would like to achieve a nice plant density as soon as possible. There are some rocks actually supporting the big rock. It's really difficult to plant there. Don't worry about it. Basically any carpet plant like the hairgrass can I just grow over it in time. Oh. Okay, this is just overkill. Okay, so if planting is this difficult, just imagine what the maintenance guy is going to say about it. So now the right side is almost done. We're going to switch to the other side and on the left. If you look at it, we actually have quite a steep elevation in the backside and using powder to cover the regular soil actually helps you keep an elevation in place. You need about one centimeter of powder to cover the regular one to keep it nice and stable. I wouldn't recommend using more than one centimeter because then it can actually just shrink too much and, and get too compact and then you might get some areas where the water doesn't flow so nicely so keep that in mind as well. Of course in the description of the video you're gonna find all the stuff I'm using. You're gonna find the new stones as well and we have another new kind of rock which is called the Black North which is also a nice new addition especially for nano tanks because it only comes in small pieces. I have a huge supporting rock underneath here. So I'm gonna need to add some soil. Chubby is just making my life much more difficult. <laughs> but I get it. <laughs> Otherwise you wouldn't see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna put the yellow carries behind both of the rocks. And as it grows tall, it, I want them to connect in the middle. Thank you. Whoa, it's big already. It's a thing people used to do in classic Iwagumi a few years ago and I've always liked it and never actually done it, so it's time. We're gonna have this just much more, like a gate in the backside. I'm finished with the build. It's been quite difficult to make the rock stand at first, but now it's come together. I've used 17 pieces of uh, Eleocharis Articularis Mini and then five pots of the Eleocharis Vivipara in the back. We're gonna use a new product in this. This is the Aquarebel Skim. Basically, it's like a regular inlet and the skimmer two-in-one.
we're gonna fill it up and then as usual we're gonna show you the tank in about two weeks time actually at the moment i have no clue what fish i want to put in there yeah it won't be as full as balaj's build you can see the plants it's not going to be enough to fill in two weeks but this is the regular way as you would do at home around two and a half weeks passed and we are back beside the aquarium As you can see, I've actually ditched the vivipara from the background. It just felt weird, it started to grow out of the water, so I've decided to replace it with some regular Eleocaris acicularis, so the, the longer one, not the mini one, as the carpet itself. It doesn't really show yet because it was in vitro, so it needs some time to actually grow, but it's gonna be around 15 or 20 centimeters long behind the two big rocks. We've added the, the livestock now, it, we have some pearl danios inside and amano shrimps for algae control and some crystal red shrimps just for their beauty. They are really nice against the bluish tint of the rocks. We've started uh, dosing ADA fertilizers from day one. We always do this, especially when we use in vitro plants. It's really important to start the fertilization from the very start. We've done the regular water changes, which is 50% every day on the first week, then 50% every second day on the second week. Now we are on week three, which means we are doing two 50% water changes this week. And from there on, we're gonna start the, the regular weekly procedures. Algae-wise, we are quite lucky, I think. We didn't have any algae showing up in the tank up until yesterday when we've had some diatoms, but we've added the Amano shrimps immediately and it's already cleared up. So I'm really hoping that's gonna be it and we won't have any, any more algae in the coming weeks. So that's about it. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell to get some notification if we upload any new videos. And also, if you like what we do, please join our membership program and see you next week. Bye.